Good morning, Rock Church. How's everybody doing? Woo! I saw you dancing, Samantha. I saw you. So, 
Hey guys, my name's Timmy. I'm one of the pastors on staff, and I am so glad that you're here to join us this morning, and we hope you enjoy your experience today. And uh, if you're a first-time guest here, we'd love for you to stop by the Connect Corner. It's to your right behind you uh, after service, and love to get to know you better. And if you're tuning in online, we're so glad you're joining us as well, and we'd love for you to connect with us, connect with one of your hosts. There's also a QR code in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Uh, You can scan that, and you can let us know how we can better connect with you and let us know who you are so we can communicate and continue to connect and uh, discover more about each other. So, so thankful you're doing that. And what I'd love to do right now is just take a moment to share just kind of what God's doing through the church. Uh, as many of you know, we're in the process of building out Ainer and currently right now we're pulling our permits for C3. So we're at that point. Absolutely. Yes. So um, partially... That's due to because the faithfulness of God through his people. Year-end giving, two things. I mean, God just showed out through his people at the year end. But what it, what it did is in the year 2020, even through a, everything that's going on, we had the largest giving at the rock in its history. So, yeah, absolutely. So, again, so we're moving forward with those projects and, Guys, we'd love for those that live in that area, for those who just love to connect, love for you to connect with our campus pastor, uh, Ainer of Ainer, uh, Scott Johnson. Find him on the website or the app and love to be able to connect there with him so you can better serve there. But guys, um, it's we've talked about what God's doing through our kingdom generosity, and we hear just financially, but also we want to talk about what is God doing through your kingdom calling? How are you connecting? How are you walking out what God's doing in your life? And this past week, we had a night of worship and and team up night. And and so thankful for those that came out. But what I don't want is for those that weren't able to make it, you to miss out on what we talked about. And we talked about how important it is to be in a community and to to do life together. And, And here at The Rock, we have what we call respond teams, which are teams that serve together that do life together. And most of those happen during one of our worship experiences. But we also have discover teams. Discover teams are a small group of people that get together and study God's word together. And we would love for you to be a part of that. And if you're not on one of those teams, please stop by the Connect Corner afterwards so we can help you get teamed up. Guys, continue to walk out your faith. We're gonna continue to hear about rhythms of life and what that rhythm, that how our rhythm of life should be with the Holy Spirit and not on sin. And guys, we're going to celebrate some baptisms that happened. And people that last week that said, you know what? I'm taking this step of faith. I'm showing that I am going to bury this old life and risen anew. So let's celebrate those baptisms and let's continue on in worship. Impossible for you. 
center of my life, Christ be magnified. Magnify, you lift you high. Make this your prayer. And I won't bow to idols. I'll stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings. I hold fast to what is true. The cross brings transformation And I'll be crucified with you, yeah Cause death is just a doorway Into resurrection life and if I join you in the sufferings Then I'll join you when you rise And when you return in glory With all the angels and the saints My heart will still be singing my song will be the same. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified. Sing it out. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified. I want us to, to go back into that bridge because there's, there's a part of that song, and I, I don't want you to miss it that, it, that it talks about, I won't go off emotion, but I'll stand on truth. And, and in the world we live, it's real easy just to, just to follow emotion. And we need to do more than follow emotion. We need to walk in truth. We need to follow the Spirit, which I'll talk a lot more about today. But I just, I want us to go back into that bridge and I just want to sing it. I want us to recognize it. I want us to think about everything in our life, in our world, in our nation. And I just want us to just to recognize the truth of God and walk it out right now. So if we could, let's go back into that bridge and, and let's just sing that just a little bit more. I won't bow to idols I'll stand strong and worship you And if it puts me in the fire I rejoice cause you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I hold fast to what is true And if the cross brings transformation Then I'll be crucified with you yeah. Cause death is just a doorway to resurrection life and if I join you in the sufferings then I'll join you when you rise and when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints my heart will still be singing my song will be the same we're singing oh Christ be magnified just let his praise arise, Christ be magnified in me. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Sing it out one more time. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Feel free to go ahead and have a seat, man. I, I'm glad that you are with us today and uh, hope that you're having a good day so far. My name is Josh. I'm one of the pastors here. And just thankful that you're here in Conway. And I know we've got some people at our online campus as well. So if you happen to be joining us from our online campus, thank you for being with us. And, and let me say this. If you're new and you're on our online campus, please connect with us. Uh, you'll notice the digital connect corner right there. You can go there. You can uh, tell us you're new or if you got prayer requests or anything like that, we'd love for you to connect with the Connect Corner, and we would love to send you a free gift uh, for doing that. For those of you in Conway, if you're new with us, I definitely encourage you uh, to stop by our Connect Corner physically here on campus as we've got a gift for you. All right, now, today we're going to jump right back into this series that we've been calling Rhythms. And uh, just to catch everybody up to speed, we're in this series because we know at the beginning of a new year that people are often looking and saying that they want this year to be the most effective year possible, that, that they want to have a productive year. Like I think all of us would say when we get to the end of 2021, that, that we would like to look back at the year, whether it's been a good year or a bad year, uh, mountaintop experiences or some valleys that we've walked through, and we'd all like to be able to say, I was more effective this year in my life in my job, in my marriage, in my family, in my faith. I had a more productive year that we want it to be a good year. And, and oftentimes we'll have New Year's resolutions that appoint us that direction. And, and resolutions are good. I have nothing wrong with them. But what I want to talk about rhythms is, is the way that you accomplish the resolution. So we've said let's add some rhythms to our life. In week one, we talked about adding the rhythm of moral excellence, about just doing the right thing, being godly. Uh, week two, last week, we talked about adding the rhythm of knowledge. Uh, and what I really said there was it means to know the word and to know his word. And we talked a lot about getting into the Word, about getting into the Bible. And, and guys, I got some good news to share, which I love, is, is we challenge you to have a 21-day commitment to every day spending time with God. And, and there's many different ways you can do that, many reading plans. But we mentioned the Rock Reading Plan and said, hey, if you need one, that's the place to go. And this week, every day, we pretty much had record numbers going to the Rock app and spending time in God's Word, all right? Uh, so let me just applaud you all for that, all right, because that's great, all right? That, that, that is transformational, that when we add God's Word into our lives. So I want to encourage you, celebrate that, but then encourage you, make sure you continue on. Don't allow it to be a one-week thing, but establish that rhythm of God's Word in your life. Um, and, and if you haven't been doing it, then jump on with us today. You're going to go back and you're going to read 2 Peter chapter 1 again, all right? Because that's our theme uh, chapter for this whole series. And in it, you see things uh, that we've talked about. You, you see this main verse what, that says, supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control. So that's what we get to talk about today. Everybody excited about talking about self-control? Okay, one person, okay? Thank you. I'm so excited. Yes, all right? Because that's what most of us would be like, ooh, that's going to be tough, right? Because if we're honest, most of us lack self-control. Right? You notice it for anybody who's ever had a, on Monday, I'm going to eat healthy type week. All right? Some of you have said that with me, or you said it at the beginning of the year. This is what I know. Every Sunday when you say, on Monday, I'm going to eat healthy, somebody brings donuts into the classroom or into the office. Am I right? You know what I mean? Like somebody brings donuts or cinnamon rolls or cookies, anything, right, to, to get you off track. And then you have to evaluate, is it worth it? Do I want to do it? And you lose control and you eat, at least if you're like me. Now, taking a bite of a donut, eating a cookie, really not a big deal unless you got some serious health issues. But I want you to see how this plays out in other areas. That, that well, I'm not going to drink. And then you take a drink. And it causes chaos in your life. That, 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 that all of a sudden you lust, and when you lust and you give in to that lust, it causes chaos in your life. That, that you're like, man, I got to get in control of my money, and then you go on a spending spree, and it causes chaos in your life. 
that if we don't live self-controlled lives, then it'll take us out of rhythm. So we got to get a rhythm of self-control. And what does that look like? What does that even mean? Right? A dictionary.com says it this way. The dictionary.com says con- self-control is control or restraint of one's actions and feelings. Right? Which I think that's good and it's a good explanation. But I want to see what the Bible says about self-control. And the way the Bible dis- defines self-control is a little different. Because what we do in the New Testament is there's two different words that we translate into self-control. And these two different words um, are are in Greek. One of them, uh, the best translation of it would be inner strength. The other word, the best translation of it would be sound judgment. And and see how that plays together. That if I want to have self-control, I will have an inner strength to do the sound judgments in my life. Uh, A guy named uh, Jerry Bridges, he wrote an incredible book called The Practice of Godliness. He said it this way. He said, we can readily see that these two ideas complement one another in the biblical meaning of self-control. Sound judgment enables us to determine what we should do and how we should respond. Inner strength provides the will to do it. Both sound judgment and inner strength are thus necessary for spirit-directed self-control. And that's what I want us to get today. Not just a rhythm of self-control, but a rhythm of spirit-directed self-control. And the way that we're going to do that is understand the difference between the rhythms of sin and the rhythms of the spirit. Like if there's, if there's one thing I can give you today, all right, just one phrase above everything, one phrase I want you to leave with, it's simply this, that if you want to have self-control, you have to resist the rhythm of sin and you have to respond to the rhythm of the Spirit. Resist the rhythm of sin, but respond to the rhythm of the Spirit. And I want you to know there are two different rhythms, you know what I mean? Like, like you could talk about the rhythm of sin, that there's a rhythm to it. There's a rhythm of sin. Now, I don't think sin always beats this rhythm. I think sometimes sin will say, hey, look at me, I'm over here. Follow this rhythm. I think sometimes it'll start changing its tune, saying, listen over here. Or I think sometimes it's like, can I get your attention? Now, the difference with the Spirit, it's constant. The Spirit doesn't get out of beat. The Spirit is going to be constant in your life. And what we've got to do is figure out the difference between the rhythm of the Spirit and the rhythm of sin. Because they both have rhythms. Let's talk about the rhythm of sin for a second. Because we're all guilty of giving into it. The rhythm of sin is is defined for us by a guy named James. Now James was the half-brother of Jesus. And he wrote a book or a letter that we have in the Bible that, that, that we can learn from. And, and I love learning from the book of James. Because think about it. You have James, half-brother of Jesus, grew up with Jesus, watched Jesus die, watched Jesus rise from the dead. If there's anybody who has a good testimony about the belief of Jesus, it would be James. Because if you're willing to call your half-brother God, there must be something about Jesus, right? Right? So, so let's listen to what James said. And James gives us this um, definition of sin, this rhythm of sin. He says, temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to, give, to grow, it gives birth to death. That, that basically he is writing about sin in a rhythmic way. That he's trying to get us to understand that sin has a rhythm. And the rhythm is temptation. The the rhythm is enticement. The rhythm is participation. And the rhythm is death. I don't know if you see it, but it's right there in the verse. Let let, let me me pull it up and kind of show it to you this way. It says this. The rhythm of sin, it starts with a temptation to sin. The, The verse says, temptation comes from our own desires. That, 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 that's the first thing we got to catch, that the rhythm of sin is born in our own desires. Now, we love to 
to test, make excuses for our sins. Maybe a better way to say it. We love to blame our sins on other things, right? Like we love to say, well, well, Satan made me sin. Or Satan's the one who tempted me. Or, or that person tempted me. Or, or that thing tempted me. Or that evil tempted me. And, and, and those things happen. You're right. Satan does tempt. Scripture teaches us that. That there is temptation that comes from outside. But here's the bottom line. The only person you can blame for your sin, the only person I can blame for my sin is myself. I can't blame my sin on anybody else. And you can't blame your sin on anybody else because we are tempted to sin by our own evil desires. That, that, that what happens is maybe, maybe Satan tempts you for a second. Maybe somebody else tempts you for a second. But the minute that thought, the minute that temptation comes into your mind, you have the ability to say, I'm under no obligation to that sin and I'm going to get rid of it. But what we do is we allow that temptation to come and we allow it to take up root in our head. We allow that temptation, that rhythm of sin to come into our head. And then we allow it to sit there for a little while. And then next thing you know, you start to think about it for a little while. Next thing you know, you, you allow it to rest in your brain. And because you don't take that thought captive and kick it out, then it stays. And once that rhythm of sin, that temptation gets in your head, it does the very next thing in the rhythm. It entices you. It entices you to sin. The temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. That once I allow that sin to come into my head, then, then, then if I allow it to stay there, it'll entice me. And how does sin entice you? I believe it's, sin entices you by, one, making you think that it'll be enjoying. Like, like you start to enjoy the thought. Like sin comes into your mind and you start to enjoy it. You start to, to, to recognize it. You start to accept it. You start to think, well, well that'll be kind of fun. Like... Like, I think I'll enjoy. Like, like, if I look at that online, then, then that's going to bring me some joy. If I, if I purchase this, that's going to bring me some joy. If I make fun of this person, that's going to bring me some joy. If I drink that, it's going to bring me some joy. That, that will start to enjoy the thought. And as we enjoy the thought, then we'll excuse the thought. We'll say, well, I mean, everybody's doing it, right? I mean, what's the big deal? Like, like, like everybody drinks a little bit. I mean, you know, like, yeah, I'm not of age, but, but all my friends drink. And if all my friends drink, then I might as well also. That, that will excuse the thought. Well, it's just looking at a little bit of porn online. I mean, I'm not hurting anybody. It's not a big deal. I don't know the person. It's like, like, I'll excuse the thought. Well, I'm just, I'm just buying a little bit. I'm just losing a little bit of control here. I, I'm, I'm just speaking a little bit out of turn. I'm just, I'm just cussing a little bit. I mean, really, what's the big deal, right? Like we start to excuse the thought. That, that, that we'll, we'll say things like, well, everybody takes a little from the company. It's not a big deal. We'll, we'll say, well, everybody cheats a little bit on their homework. I mean, everybody does it. And you'll be sitting there thinking, like, I know I'm not going to school on, on, on campus, so, well, I'll just Google the answer, right? I know some of you parents, you've looked at your kids and said, would you please just Google the answer? You see what I'm getting at? Like, we'll excuse it. And when we excuse it and we enjoy it, we're enticed by it, we're dragged away, and then what we do next is we participate in it. These desires give birth to sinful actions. So again, listen to the rhythm. Listen to the rhythm. Listen to the rhythm of sin trying to get your attention. Listen to the rhythm of sin trying to entice you. Listen to the rhythm of sin then participating. Where you go, well, I enjoy the thought. I've excused the thought, so I might as well participate in the thought. And then when I participate in the thought, let's admit something. And I'm probably not supposed to say this as your preacher, but let's admit it. Sometimes it's fun to sin. Sometimes it's enjoying. There, there's an enjoyment. Sometimes when you, when you finally blow your cork, you, you finally lose control, and you yell at somebody, or you throw something across the room, you let your temper out. And for a moment, there's enjoyment there. 
That, that maybe there's enjoyment in some sexual sin. It's just like, oh, it's a risk. It's something I haven't tried. You know what I mean? And we enjoy something for a moment. It's enjoying just yelling at your parents and, and saying, I'm done, just, I'm done with it. It's enjoying ex- exasperating your kids. If there's an enjoyment for a second, but it's momentary. Sin might be enjoying for a moment, but it is momentary. It won't last because what sin does is then bring death. Look at the last part of the verse. And when it is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Do you see that rhythm of sin? Temptation, temptation, I'm tempted by sin, and then I'm enticed by sin, and then I participate in sin, and then sin brings death. It brings death. What was seemed enjoying, all of a sudden there's remorse, there's regret, there's guilt, there's shame, there's pain. And what seemed great, it seemed like a good rhythm to follow, a good drum beat. It seemed like something I should chase. All of a sudden has just brought chaos into your life. That's what sin does. It brings death. It brings death. Think about it in these terms. That that maybe you're you're married and, and maybe... Maybe you, you just get tempted by lust. And when you get tempted by lust, then, then all of a sudden you get enticed by lust. And you get enticed by lust, so then you participate in lust. And then when you participate, it brings death to the marriage. Maybe you're a student and you love God and you've been, been trying to live a godly life. And then the next thing you know, you go off to college and, and you start hearing a different rhythm when you're at college. And at that different rhythm, you're... you're, you're you're tempted by some sin because everybody around you is drinking. And then you, you are enticed by it and think, well, it'll help me to fit into that group and I'll get to know people. And even my parents, I mean, they sowed some wild oats when, when they were off in college and they're doing fine now. So, so I'll go ahead and I participate. And then the next thing you know, it brings death. That what seemed okay has brought death into your life. And what we've got to do is we have to resist. Resist the temptation to sin. First uh, Peter 5a says it this way: be self-controlled and sober-minded, for the your enemy, the devil, roars around like a lion looking for people to devour. Uh, Romans chapter 8 says it this way: it says, those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Do you see the difference there? The rhythm of sin will lead to death, but the rhythm of the Spirit will lead to life. Let me keep going. It says it this way in Galatians. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting against each other. Do you see that? Like they're, they're, they're constantly fighting against each other. That, that the Holy Spirit, the rhythm of the spirit, and the rhythm of sin is different. That that they're at war with one another. And you're never going to be able to walk in step with the rhythm of the spirit and at the same time as the rhythm of sin. Because the rhythm of sin is different than the rhythm of the spirit. The rhythm of sin will always be different than the rhythm of the spirit. And we've got to learn to walk in in relation to the rhythm of the Spirit because they're always at war and they're never the same. I get people say this, and it's the easiest one to to explain. People will say, well, we're just living together because it's easier. And we believe God put us together for this reason. Let me just say this. That is opposite of Scripture. So the Spirit will never say, well, that's okay. Because those two rhythms, they don't march to the same beat. Those two rhythms, they're not in sync. And what we've got to do is we have to learn to say no and resist the rhythm of sin and respond to the rhythm of the Spirit. And look at this last verse. It says it this way. 
in Galatians. It says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Not in, not in one aspect of our life, but in every part of our life, let us follow the leading of the Spirit. Well, how do you do that? I mean, because it's easy to follow the rhythm of sin, isn't it? Anybody, well, I mean, I'll admit it. It's easy to follow that rhythm. It's easy to jump on. But how do I follow the rhythm of the Spirit in every area of my life? And I would say it this way, that you've got to train your head and your heart to listen. That if you want to follow the rhythm of the Spirit, train your head and your heart to listen. And the easiest way to hear the Spirit speak, because I get this all the time, people say, well, I don't ever hear God speak. Like, like it's been forever since I've heard God speak, people will say that. Listen, let me make it real simple. If you want to hear the Spirit speak, know His Word. Can I just remind you of last week? The rhythm that we talked about last week? That we said that it's not a stacking, it's a involved, it's bringing the rhythms into your life. Think about it. If I bring the rhythm of knowledge, of knowing his word into my life, that every time I open up his word, that's the spirit speaking. And as the spirit starts to speak through his word, I can hear it. I can listen to it. I can recognize it in my head. So the biggest challenge, just like last week I still have for you, is know the word. Because if I know the word, I'm going to be training my head to listen. But then I also have to train my heart. Because the Holy Spirit will always speak through his word. The Holy Spirit will also speak to your heart. Now that one's harder. Okay? Well, I'll just be honest. That one's a harder one. All right? I've never heard the audible voice of God speak to my heart. But I've heard, I have felt the nudging of the Holy Spirit time and time again. I felt the Holy Spirit saying, hey, Josh, you need to go do this. I felt the Holy Spirit say, Josh, that's not a good decision. I felt the Holy Spirit say, hey, you need to speak up in this situation. I felt the Holy Spirit say, keep your mouth shut for once. That one's hard to obey. <laughs> but I've, you see what I'm getting at? That's the nudge of the Holy Spirit. Some of you are here right now or watching online right now that the Holy Spirit's nudging your heart. That the Holy Spirit's saying, man, I want to get your attention. Maybe you even come to church and while you're at church, you just get all anxious just because you don't even know why. Listen, that's the Holy Spirit. Songs, we start to sing songs. And as we sing songs, let me just tell you something. There's really nothing special about the songs we sing in and of themselves. But what we are singing is concepts that are taken directly from Scripture. And when the Holy Spirit takes that concept that is from Scripture and you allow yourself to be in the midst of it, now the Holy Spirit starts knocking on your heart. You see how that works? That, that the Holy Spirit's saying, listen, I got a message for you. And that's when we need to follow. See, the rhythm of the Holy Spirit, we need to... We need to Learn how to, to hear. We need to, we need to, with our head and our heart, learn how to listen. But then the second part of that is then with our hands and with our feet, we got to follow. And let's admit it, that's when it gets tough. Because I can sit in church and hear the word of God. I can sing and I can feel the, the, the movement of the spirit on my heart. I, I can open up his word and I can know it, but it takes a whole other thing to actually walk it out. And guys, the only way that you will learn how to follow with your hands and with your feet is time and practice and discipline. You won't get it right the first time. Let me just say that. But with time and work and discipline and practice, I believe you can do it. I believe that you can hear the rhythm of the Spirit, and you can follow it. Let me just show it a little bit better. I've been banging this drumstick the whole time. Um, and I just need y'all to know something. I'm not a drummer. But I'm going to play drums for you. Is that okay? Thank you, Emma, my friend. I'm going to play drums for you because the reason I want to play drums for you is because I can, I can help us understand this idea of following the rhythm of the Spirit a, a little bit better. 
And, and, and here's what I mean by that, is on my own, there's no way I could play drums. There's no way I could keep a constant. Even, even if you were listening when I was banging that drumstick on that table, I wasn't perfectly in time, okay? But, but we have a, we have a, um, a musical device, I don't even know what to call it. Um, we call it a click track that all of our musicians use uh, when they're on stage to help us stay in time. And the whole idea with this is that, that we want to stay in time. We, wanna, we want everybody to be in sync together. And we want all of us to sing together. The, the click track sounds like this, okay? And it's just, it's just a noise and a lady uh, that, that will talk to us. So l- let me just play so you understand what I mean by a click track. One, two, chorus, two, three, four. So the, the good musicians, what they'll do is they'll just stay on time with this lady, okay? Now, now here's the problem. My job now is to stay on time. And if you'd ask Krista, I'm not very good at following the directions. <laughs> I better stop right there, Mike. I get myself in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Mike's one of our drummers. He's going to help me a little bit. But, but here's what I want to do. I want to try to listen to this lady. And I want to try to listen to the cadence that she is going to put down. This click track. And I want to try to follow it. And here's what I know. If I'm not in sync with the click track, it's not the click track's fault. So let's see how good I, y'all think I'm going to do all right? Okay, I got like seven of you. This will be my fourth time doing it, and I suck at it. (laughs) A cow, oh, if I had a cowbell, come on, can you make a cowbell? That was fun. I haven't done that yet. That was all right. Anyway, all right, let me try to stay in time. two, chorus, two, three, four. Oh, I like the sound of that. Beefy bass. That's not bad. Come on, y'all. That's not bad. Yeah, thank you. I just got off because I started talking. All right. Interlude. Now I got to use this because she's telling me to do something else. Oh, that's the first time. Ah! Verse three. Am I, uh, I, I can always tell because it's faces, okay? But again, here's the problem. When I use this leg, I can't use this arm very well. And when I use this arm, I can't use this leg very well. Tag. Chorus. And then the worst thing is, I gotta get this in. (laughs) You know the verse? There's a verse in the Bible that says, if your arm calls you to sin, just cut it off. (laughs) I would be a lot better right now. But here's what I wanna do. Mike, I'm gonna let you jump in. You probably need some drumsticks. There's the yours. I'm gonna let you see how you do. And my guess is you're gonna do a little bit better. Before Vamp. you play, let me, make, let me make one illustration. I could kind of stay on tune or on beat with one leg or with one arm. But if I tried to use a different arm or whatever, I, I lost it. And I want you to realize how bad that is. For this reason. What's it matter if my leg is in rhythm with the Holy Spirit, but the other aspects of my life are out of beat? What's it bring? Chaos. If my arm is in rhythm with the spirit, but my leg is not, chaos. It's out of control. And the rhythm is off and the melody sucks. But if I can get everything in tune, well, then it sounds a lot better. And that's what I believe will happen with Mike. One, two, chorus, two, three, four. Just a little different. Just, how about I pick this up instead? <laughs> but you see the difference? Like so much more, you can keep going. So much more opens up because he's staying in tune and all Interlude. aspects. Interlude. What about if I come in? Am I going to mess him up? Verse 3. 
So, here's what I want us to get. Definitely. Here's what I want you to see. That, that I got to get every aspect of my life in sync with the Spirit. In all areas, as Galatians 5 said. Because if I have an aspect out of sync, then it's going to mess up the melody. It's going to mess up the rhythm. But when we train ourselves, because here's the difference. I've never done this. Until this weekend, I'd never done it. Mike's been playing drums for how many? 30 years. He's only 31 years of age, but he's played drums for 30 years. All right, so he's had a lot more work, and he's been listening to that click track for a lot longer. So it's easier for him to stay in tune, in rhythm. But the beauty of that is this. The more he has learned to stay in rhythm, the more the whole kit opened up to him. And the same is true with your faith. The more that we learn to stay in rhythm with the Spirit and listen to what the Spirit is saying, the more of the life of God opens up in front of you. The more effective you can be. The more productive you can be because you're over here and you're like, oh, I hear you, Spirit. I hear what you're saying. Let me go do that. Oh, I hear what you're saying in my heart right now. Let me do that. Oh, I see what you're saying in your word. I need to say no to that. Oh, I see what you're saying in your word. I need to share this with somebody else. Because I'm in step with the Spirit, so much more opens up. And then here's the other thing, that when I'm in step with the Spirit, when, when evil comes, when Satan comes, when temptation comes, when I come over and try to get in the way or throw him off beat, he's like, that's not the rhythm of the Spirit. That's some other funky noise. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's a clank. That's something that's going to ruin me. That's something that's going to destroy me. And it's real easy for Mike to say, that's not the beat I'm following. I'm going to stick to the voice of the Spirit. And that's what we need to be doing. And, and, and let me go one step further. I want you to notice the difference. The difference not just between me and Mike doing it because of our difference in, in experience and all that. I was listening to the click track come through those speakers, hitting that wall, and coming back to me. Mike's listening to it through a device that is inside his ear. Whew, I haven't preached this yet, y'all. <laughs> this is, this is the, 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 the 1130 service special. Because this is what that means. That, that, that you can be here. And you can hear the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can nudge at you. You can open up God's Word and you can hear the Holy Spirit. But there's a vast difference than hearing the Holy Spirit and being indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And when you respond to Christ, He takes up residency in your life. And He doesn't speak into your ear. He speaks out of your life. And it's so much easier to say, oh, I hear you, Spirit. I hear what you're saying. I catch that rhythm. And because I catch that rhythm, I'm resisting that temptation. I'm saying no to that beat. I'm saying no to that drum. I'm saying no to that temptation because that is not of God. And that's what I want for me and it's what I want for you because that's when we become more effective. So resist the rhythm of sin. And respond to the rhythm of the Spirit. And let's do that in worship right now. We're going to sing several songs. We're going to spend a lot of time in response right now. Um, just, just spending time with the Lord because I want us to get this. And my favorite part of the, uh, of the whole service is this response time. Because what we've done is we've opened up God's Word. And now we're saying, okay, Lord. I need to respond. So spirit speak, convict. And, and some of us right now, some of us right now, we need to be convicted of the sin that we're participating in. That you've allowed temptation to come, you've allowed enticement to come, and you've been participating in a sin. And I don't need to mention what sin it is. The Holy Spirit has already brought it to your heart and brought it to your head. I don't have to, I don't have to go through a list of sins because the Holy Spirit will call out things in your life. And as the Holy Spirit is calling that out in your life right now, recognize it and say, you know what? I've, I've, been, I've been walking to the beat of the wrong drummer. I've been following the wrong rhythm. I've been participating in sin and it's bringing death into my life. And today, make a decision and say, no, 
I'm done with that. I'm resisting that. I'm resisting that urge. I'm resisting that lust. I'm resisting that temptation. I'm done with it. And here's the beauty. You have the power to do that. Because of God, not on your own, but because of God, you can resist and fight off every temptation. Because again, remember, we sin because of our own desires, not because of what somebody else is doing or saying. So say no and walk away from it. And start marching and walking and dancing and living to the spirit rhythm. Start walking and dancing and marching to the rhythm of the spirit in your life. And the beauty is, I need to say this, the beauty is, is some of the things that we've done that have brought death, he can restore He can restore that marriage. He can restore that sobriety. He can restore that relationship with your parents. He can restore those friendships. He can restore that purity in your life. So come to him and then walk it out. So why don't you do me a favor? Let's stand. And we're going to go into this time of response. And if you're online, then, then I challenge you during this time of response, use that connect corner. Somebody wants to help you come to Jesus, get baptized, get teamed up, pray with you. We want to help you and we want to walk with you. For those of you online, if you want to, or on campus, if you want to take communion, you want to get baptized, you want to pray with somebody, go to the Connect Corner for those things. Communion's up front on the stage if you desire that. Jesus, right now, we thank you for the way that you speak through your spirit. Help us to hear Help us to follow. Help us to respond to your rhythm. In your name, Jesus, amen. Let's spend some time responding. I just want to see you move. I hear you call. I am available. I say, yes, Lord, I am available. And I 
rising. Make me a vessel of your hoping. Pour me out. Pour
want you to stand on the promise of that truth. That you're surrounded by Him. Sing it with me. And I am surrounded by the arms of the Father. And I am surrounded by songs of Child of God. 